Hello, hello lovers of all the nice things all around the world. Jock here, from another perspective. Not in front of the green screen this time, but in front of some crates. <laughs> I wish my name was Mr. Gates. I'd store my money up in crates. Anyway, hello, hello. Uh, today a little review of Milk and Honey. You've heard me speak a lot of it in, in recent times. Uh, that's because I've taken a real love to it. Uh, this is the one just now, the classic. Milk and Honey from Israel. Uh, I'll put the, the box down because it'll take up so much room. And this is the classic I'm pouring now. So, there we have the classic in the glass. All the way from Tel Aviv, uh, matured in ex-bourbon casks and an STR casks. The next one is the, the Sherry Elements, which I have outside its little box. The Sherry Elements, you can see the colour of it. Very nice. Ooh, very nice. And I'll put that in the glass as well, in the, to the right of me to the left of you. So, before I get started, something I'd like to say, a certain blogger, you know who you are if you're watching, if you're not watching well, then this is, will make no sense. Uh, a certain blogger blogged about one of the sample casks from Milk and Honey. Uh, he said, you know, when you read text, when you just read a text, uh, you know, a text on your phone, you just read the, 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 the flat letters of that text and you wonder, you can only in your mind interpret the tone, the tone of the actual text. But in the text this blogger said of a one-year-old cask, which was an experimental cask, of a, a, a fruit wine, which is very, very normal in Israel, uh, which was made from pomegranate wine, you can make wine from any fruit. You can make it from rhubarb. You can make it from cherries, from anything. In Sweden, they have jaktwein, which is uh, from fruits, wild fruits. And uh, the, uh, and even one of the, the, the Swedish whiskies is matured in a fruit wine cask. Quite normal. But this blogger from the Netherlands said, this is a ridiculous cask. This pomegranate one, not not these ones, but the one he he said it was one year old and it was an experimental cask. He said, you know, whiskey if it gets any lower than eighty, it's getting edgy. If it gets below sixty, it's not even worth looking at. I'll only give it twenty five out of a hundred. Twenty five out of a hundred. And uh, he also said, this is shit. And don't buy it. Well. Let me tell you this, it's not for sale anyway, because it was an experimental cask and uh, it was quite a long blog, full of ridicule and it made me wonder, it just made me wonder in my mind, why on earth he went to the trouble of making this really long negative blog. He said, I don't care about a whiskey from a certain country, from a certain city and it's the first one, it doesn't matter to me, I don't care, this isn't on my radar, I don't care. But he cared enough to write a really long negative blog, which is his good right. I am not saying he doesn't have a right to an opinion, I'm not saying he doesn't have a right to say whatever he wants to say, but there you have it. It made me think, it made me think, what was the motive? I cannot, I can't imagine it, I've turned it over in my mind again and again, and I can't get over his motive. I don't know why he went to the bother of such in, writing such a terrible negative blog uh, about, instead of giving something else a second shot. Anyway, this one. Away with that stuff. Let's, let's take all of this stuff I've just said and pew, out the window with it. This one. The classic. Milk and honey classic. The Milk and Honey Classic. There we go. The Milk and Honey all the way from Tel Aviv. And yes, it is the first whiskey distillery in Israel. Whether you care or not, that's the fact of the matter. 
It's the first whiskey that's real. And I've, I've put it into a, a, a nice big wine glass. 46%. Smelling it. Mmm. Lovely. Uh, I'll taste it. I'll put it in my mouth first and I'm going to get something to make an illustration. Mmm. Oh, yummy. What I have here, <laughs> in a package I'm struggling with to get open. Come on. There we go. Open it up. Is vanilla pods. This is vanilla. Now, it smells somewhat of it and tastes of it too. It also has a little bit of a smell of honey. I have a little bit of honey left in this pot, in this jar, as the, which you could probably say in English, the jar, the honey pot, the honey jar, which was made by a good friend of mine, who play, who, a musician friend who plays music with us in our band. Uh, and I also have here some peppers, peppercorns, of different types, they're all different seasons of peppers and spices. Now, when we get into this whiskey, it smells of and tastes of all these things. Mmm. Beautiful. And with a little bit of water, we open it up. It's got it's got a slight dryness, the oakiness. You can feel the oakiness in the throat because of the tannins. Uh, and now with, with water it opens up and the tannins begin to go away. And then it becomes lovely and sweet and round and, and beautiful. It was made by uh, Tomer Goran and his team. Tomer is uh, a master distiller who has become world renowned as opposed to making shit that you shouldn't buy. <laughs> World renowned for making whiskey in the heat, in a very hot climate. Now I want to read something to you uh, from uh, Whiskey Advocate magazine, who just uh, voted this whiskey number 20 in the whole world. Tom McGoran, head distiller at Milk and Honey Distillery in Tel Aviv, excels at warm climate single malt production under the intensity of the Mediterranean sun, his ethos is beautifully captured within the Scotia certi certified flagship bottling, matured in bourbon and shaved, toasted and recharred casks, STR casks from wine casks. It exudes a nose of golden syrup, vanilla, marshmallow, jasmine, and it goes on and on and on. Uh, I have a slightly different uh, ways of interpreting it, but you know my my uh, my interpretation is very good. Uh, now, in that in that same uh, uh, review in, in in Malt Advocate, it got ninety points as opposed to the twenty five that the Dutch blogger gave the experimental one year old cask. I don't know what it'll give this one. I don't even know what his motive was to. I was, I was sharp about it. Sorry. Get back to the whiskey. The whiskey's good. Hmm. Now, a thing I've been doing in the past, uh, recently, uh, when I do my own blogs, not for the importer, but just for myself, is to compare a whiskey to one of my other great passions, and my other great passion is perfume. In this case, we have a perfume, and you see a big X on a leather uh, clad box. It's a very luxurious box. It's a very luxurious perfume, very expensive perfume, too. Uh, it's called. Uh, it's made by by an Italian niche perfume maker called Xerjov. Xerjov, the X being the the first letter of his name, Xerjov, and he makes a, a, a whole bunch of different perfumes. And this perfume is called Naxos. Naxos. I'll put it up to the camera in the hope that the camera will capture it. Naxos. Now Naxos. Uh, when I put that on my on my wrist, my left wrist. Okay. Oh, lovely. And I'll put this whiskey here. 
onto my right wrist. Oh, the perfume just overpowers the whiskey. <laughs> I've uh, I've overdone it. I have to, I need to get my nose closer to the whiskey to capture all of that. Now, vanillins uh, are captured in in the perfume world by a bean, which grows in trees uh, in the Amazon, I believe, called the tonka bean, and that that is uh, the 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 head ingredient in this Naxos perfume, the tonka bean, which uh, gives it such a, a nice and beautiful uh, vanilla, caramel-like uh, sm scent. It's a, it's a proper amber scent, this one. If you, if you like amber, this is your thing. Uh, as I said, rather expensive, and um, luckily I have a, a deal with a perfume house where I uh, I do some work for them and uh, I, they pay me in, in perfume so it's a sort of closed purse agreement. So getting back to this first whiskey which is their flagship uh, I've put it into a wine glass so that it can get plenty of room to move around and get up to my nose and in the drink Very similar to that perfume, amber, uh, not only in colour but in smell, and also a vanillic, uh, caramel. Uh, well, Tolman even has his own uh, uh, notes on the back of it. He says, gentle vanilla sweetness, and I get that indeed, followed by light oak and floral notes. The floral notes were interpreted by uh, the, the magazine, which I just... Uh, quoted the, the Malt Advocate magazine as being jasmine. Uh, then in the palate and the mouth it gets it has a light body, I get that, and to, indeed vanilla, caramel and honey sweetness balanced by woody notes and light black pepper spices. Black pepper spices but I get allspice which is uh, pretty good too. Now we have the next one to talk about before I, this thing takes too long. I can see now on my camera, I've been going on now for 12 minutes in which part of that was, was something about someone said negatively, which I just felt had to be said. This next one is from their Elements series called the Sherry Elements. There is also a, a Peated Elements and there is also an STR wine, red wine cask. But there we go, the Sherry Elements. There we go with it. Beautiful. Isn't it lovely? Lovely black and red bottle, uh, box, sorry. Uh, the bottle is uh, is yellow, black and red, which is their, signi their, their signature colour is yellow and black. But here we have it, the sherry elements. And it's not really a, a, a gigantic sherry bomb. Uh, I wouldn't call it a sherry bomb, but my goodness, the sherry's coming through. I can get marzipan on it. Nugget, nugget, and uh, Turkish fruits, these dried fruits. Oh, it's lovely. Mmm, I like a sherry whiskey. It's, I think it's got a lot of Oloroso, but I'm not sure. They found a, a, a winery, a, a sherry house in Spain, which could make a kosher sherry. Uh, I won't get into that, but, but it, it exists. It doesn't matter. Look it up on Google. It'll save me the bother of telling you. But uh, anyway, the uh, because of the certain restrictions in certain restaurants and uh, and other establishments in Israel, they decided that all of their products is going is going to be kosher, and uh, so this is kosher certified. Uh, now with a bit of water in it, you just saw me putting water into it. Mm. Jellied sugar fruits. It's beautiful, round, and the tannins, which was in the which was in the last one, which I like. You know, if you like IPA beer, IPA beer, then um, you know that bitterness is, can be a very good thing. Now this one has got that that this this the, the first one I did. It's got that bitterness, and the second one that doesn't have that at all. 
doesn't have it at all. I'm going to have a look at Tomer's notes to see what he says. He says in the aroma, dominant rich red fruit notes covered by gentle oak, caramel scent and lemon freshness. The lemon freshness I don't quite get, but uh, maybe that's because I just had this, this other one which is more citrusy. Mm. And then in the palette, medium bodied, light fruity, sherry sweetness, rich fruit, dark chocolate followed by gentle oak notes. And then the finish along the dark chocolate notes linger in the palette for a while, followed by tobacco and oak notes. Now that tobacco is a is a, an interesting thing. I uh, I get it. I get the tobacco, dried tobacco leaves. Mm. They're both beautiful. Uh, they're both for. Uh, uh, for anyone who likes a, a good whiskey, and they are very good. Remember that the angel share in that part of the world is very, very big. The angel share, uh, i.e., for people who don't know what that means, the evaporation uh, which comes out of the barrel is uh, is very, very high. The uh, in Scotland it's between one and three percent. In Israel, it will go up to 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 fifteen percent, twelve percent. Anyway, it can even go right up even higher for the ones that they mature at the Dead Sea, which is the lowest part on earth. And there's, I have some bottles behind me here. Uh, I'll get up. Oh, I'm sitting down low. I'll get up and show you some of these bottles I have behind me. Now you can see them in the in the here. Some of these one, some of these babies have been uh, maturing down in the Dead Sea. By the way, I even have a pomegranate finish one but I, I'll stop talking about that now I get I really will stop talking about it. Jock shut up stop it. Right getting back down again oh there we go you met you get you you realize you're getting older when you make that little noise you know when your knees bend that you get down you oh that noise that's uh anyway here we go milk and honey first whiskey distillery in Israel whether you like it or not and uh or whether you care or not uh, in Scotland they do it too. In Scotland we are the highest distillery, we are the lowest distillery, we are the most western, we are the most eastern, we are the distillery with the most women, we are the distillery with the most men, we have the we have the smallest distillery, we've got the largest distillery, we've got the distillery which is the last one using uh, direct firing, we've got the, uh, the most modern distillery, we've got the most eco-friendly distillery. They say all these kind of things, it's a marketing thing, it doesn't matter. You know, to actually mention, I don't care if the whiskey is uh, uh, is made by only women or only men. It's, it's all about taste. And the old adage, one must have taste in the first place. Eh? So, I finished it off. This one, all finished off. Lovely jubbly, very nice indeed. And then I'll pour some water into the empty glass because I can clear my palate with some water. And then get into this sherried one again, which I really love too. I like them both. If you're going to pair this one at all, the sherried one, I would I would pair it with a, a nice bit of blue cheese or something like Stilton or such like. It would go really well with it. Mm. Oat cakes and Stilton, uh, heaven on earth, in my opinion, are, are really, really, really old, well-matured cheddar. Ah, lovely. That's the stuff. Anyway, uh, from me, joke in my little room from the other perspective you usually see me over there with the camera pointing that way I've got a big green screen up there but now you see me in another perspective with some of my books and some of my whiskies and some other drinks too uh, I've just oh that the aftertaste of these whiskies is just absolutely wonderful thanks for watching I hope that this helps somewhat in your decision whether or not you want to buy it and until the next time, Slanjiva, Lechaim.
and uh, see you all again.